Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome. My name is Don Grease. I am the manager of sales and business development here at Lifeboat Distribution, and we are happy, as always, to have you with us here today as we discuss the many ways MindJet is helping organization make huge gains in productivity, improve collaboration and project management, and better manage their SharePoint knowledge centers. You know, Lifeboat and, and MindJet, we go back a long way. We've partnered for nearly a decade now. And as MindJet's sole distributor in North America, we are enormously proud to participate in today's discussion. So the last time we got together with today's panelist, Kelly Miller, we were taking a peek under the hood of the new MindJet 11. Today, Kelly is back, and we are going to discuss how things are going for customers since the MindJet 11 launch, and we are going to really dig in to why customers need and want this product and how you can find opportunities, make money, and grow your numbers by selling MindJet. So before we go on, let me welcome our main guest for today's discussion. Kelly Miller is the Product Marketing Manager for MindJet. Welcome, Kelly. Hello. So nice to be here, Don. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, you're welcome. We love having you on our little uh, broadcast each time you're, you're available. So just a few quick notes before we begin. Um, Kelly and I do want you all to know that we do encourage you to ask questions, and you may do that by entering your questions in the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of the screen. At the conclusion of the discussion, we will answer as many questions as time permits. Um, we are also going to pop up some polling questions along the way, so please look for those and answer as many of those questions as you can. And finally, remember, we are also giving away, again today, a $100 Amex gift card uh, to one lucky attendee before we sign off. Um, so that's exciting. We love doing that with you guys. Okay, so once again, welcome Kelly. And let's begin uh, by asking you to talk about, for our resellers who might be considering partnering with MindJet, um, what it is you would like them to know about your success in the marketplace and how you go to market? Those are good questions, Don. I would say, you know, just to sort of give everybody a little thumbnail of the company, as, as you mentioned, we've been in business for over 10 years. Uh, we're an international firm, actually in many ways, you know, started out with a close collaboration uh, between Europe and uh, North America. Uh, we've built up uh, an impressive user base. We have two, over 2 million paid customers right now, uh, and that's in addition to uh, we launched a little over a year ago our, our new mobile products. We have over a million uh, mobile users, which is always a little tricky because it's a free product, but it is a great gateway into our, our more traditional web and, and desktop products, so that's always a, a bragging point. Uh, you know, we have a huge adoption among individual uh, contributors inside of companies. Uh, you know, a lot of people use this to, uh, to get their work done, to organize projects, but we also have uh, over 83% of the Fortune 100 companies uh, use MindJet, and that includes big installations at Cisco, uh, Dow Chemical, and Autodesk uh, here in the U.S., uh, and companies like BMW and Volvo uh, in Europe. So lots of individual contributors, but also lots of big corporations as well. And I would say uh, another key point, for, especially for this discussion, is we sell practically all of our software uh, with our channel partners. Uh, in EMEA, it's 100% through the channel, uh, and in North America, it's, it's um, not 100%, but it's quite high. So having good, you know, committed, uh, dedicated channel partners is a, is a huge part of our business model. That is excellent to hear, Kelly, and I'm glad that you, you made that point because that is key to our resellers um, here at Lifeboat. Um, so, you know, as I uh, remarked uh, in my opening, Kelly, MindJet has recently, you know, sort of reinvented the product. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain to our uh, dedicated MindJet reseller why those changes were made and why the changes are so positive for businesses? We really did two major announcements last September when we rolled out uh, uh, MindJet 11. And the, really the, the big ones, and you know, these, these are sort of industry trends as well as something that MindJet is doing itself, but they're, they're, both, they're both always uh, interesting struggles. The one big one is the idea of traditionally MindJet has been a, a Windows desktop product. 
uh, sold as, as basically a shrimp, shrink wrap product. It was it was sold as a, with a perpetual license, and basically we would go in and sell upgrades to people who had purchased the perpetual license. What we've done is move from that now to much more of, of we still sell our, our Windows and our Mac product, desktop products, but also we now have uh, a web product that's a hosted service, and we have our, our mobile products, and really what we've done is, is take them all of them together and roll them out as a subscription. You know, this, this is a general industry trend. I, I, before joining Mindjet, I worked at Adobe. Before Adobe, I worked at Autodesk. I was a product marketing manager in both, and both those companies are going through, you know, major internal uh, changes from perpetual licenses to subscription. So this has been a, a big push for Mindjet as well. I would say from the from the customer standpoint, the big plus of moving to subscription is this idea of you know you're 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 buying into a service. You're getting the latest software as soon as it becomes available, instead of getting a, you know attacked by the, the 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 company to try and upgrade or packaging stuff together into a series of, of yearly or you know every year and a half sort of, of upgrade cycles. Uh, and it also gives them much more predictable predictable sort of budgeting costs. You know, I've seen this in my own personal life. I, I tend to subscribe to things now like, like TV and, and my phone service that, uh, you know, I was used to, to not subscribing to. For resellers and, and software vendors in general, it really is, is huge because it moves you into this idea of a recurring revenue stream. You know, you're, you're getting money uh, from an installed base on a regular basis. So rather than going out and having to find new customers all the time, you can focus more on your existing customer base making sure that they're having a terrific experience and then generating the bene benefits of, of getting that recurring revenue from them. And I think it also sort of intrinsically brings you a little closer to your customer as well because you're now, you know, working on this recurring revenue. So that, that was one major change. <laughs> the other major change is instead of selling our products as individual components, we now have bundled them all together into a single MindJet offering, you know, trying to make it simpler to purchase from us. So rather than deciding, do I want the Windows desktop product combined with the web product? Do I want you know, the Mac desktop product combined with the mobile product? Do I want the, you know, the SharePoint add-on tied in with the Windows desktop? We said, you just purchased MindJet from us. When you get an annual subscription to MindJet, you get access to all of our products uh, at a single subscription price, making it you know, much easier for both our resellers and our customers uh, to do business with us. So that's, that's the two biggies. You know, I, I love both of those points, but I, I think the um, the recurring revenue stream is really a key one because, you know, I use your product now, and you know, I'm kind of hooked on it, and I wouldn't want to give it up, right. you know. So I, I'm willing to bet that the majority of Mindjet customers feel the same way, and so uh, that's something our resellers can legitimately um, look as look at as a positive uh, selling Mindjet. Um, and, you know, on to the next question, uh, back to me and using your product. I do think it is such an inter interesting uh, product. I've used it for a while now, and I find that I rely on it more and more to keep my crazy project schedule organized. But tell us how you see businesses utilizing MindJet and the key benefits that they gain, gain from the product. So the, there's several sort of top-level benefits that I talk about, especially when I'm talking to a customer who's never been exposed to, to MindJet software before. So I think as you and I have talked about a bit over the, the past year or two, it's a great way to have sort of a visual canvas that allows you to go through and collect and organize information and just present it clearly, whether you're sitting down and, and bringing in documents that you want or, or various sources of information in Outlook or stored on SharePoint or you know, it's stored on, on some virtual cloud service, just a way to kind of collect and organize that information just for yourself as an individual, but it gets even better when you're working with an extended team. So going through and getting buy-in from people, make sure that you're, you're getting, listening to everybody's input, having them bring in and, and, and work on the, the information and organize it in a way that makes sense to the whole team, you know, previewing that, that map with customers to make sure that they understand it, showing it to your own management team, you know, give them that, that 30,000 foot overview, and then being able to dive into the details. You know, it's a great way uh, to collect and organize information. And that, that was a benefit from day one with our traditional desktop product. Now that we've moved into the, the, the web hosted product into some of our mobile products, 
you also get the benefit of this social task management. So being able to go through and plan out a project visually, get buy-in from the group, all the stakeholders, external agencies, your own management team, customers, and then being able to drill down and tactically execute against each of those, being able to send it over to our task management system, being able to assign an individual responsibility, start an end dates, you know, attach any supporting documents, and then making sure that everybody has visibility into those tasks as you're executing against them, you know, that's another huge benefit, business benefit for practically any company that we're working with. That's awesome. Um, since the new release, uh, businesses, as you've said, they, they now have all new ways to be more productive with management, with their partners, with customers, and with all their extended teams. But uh, maybe you could drill down a little bit and talk about each component of the MindJet solution, the whole bundled MindJet solution, um, and, and tell us how each fits to really drive productivity. So our, our overall message here, Don, for customers is that, you know, we basically work the way that you do. So we're, we're trying to make ourselves more and more kind of platform agnostic. Uh, we have a, a Mac and Windows desktop product. You know, the Windows desktop product is kind of our, our Cadillac in many ways. That's the product that we have the most uh, time and energy invested in. It, it's got the most detailed, you know, you can only do Gantt charts, for instance, as well as uh, information maps inside the Windows product. We've got tight in integration with Microsoft SharePoint and Microsoft Outlook from our Windows desktop product. But we also have a large amount of our, our installed base that's interested in using our Mac desktop product. Once integration uh, with the Mac, uh, the Mac family of products and, and, you know, is less interested in Windows. We offer both and they, they come as a standard part of, uh, of the software we deliver. You can even, let's say we have, we have lots of customers now, you know, they'll have a Windows machine at, at their work, but they use a Mac machine at home. Uh, they have the entitlement to go ahead and install both pieces of software, and because the map is essentially, uh, you know, a glorified XML file, they're able to pass it back and forth from the Mac to Windows environment uh, and get the full usage out of it there. We also have our new uh, web-based product, uh, which includes both a mapping client, so a browser-based mapping tool that you can access anywhere you have access to the Internet, uh, we have a file storage and, and sharing system. So if you want to go in and take one of those maps and share it with somebody who, who doesn't have direct access to your account, we allow the ability to bring in uh, essentially a free uh, number of, of, of guests into your, your account that you're a member of and share mapping information with them. And we also have uh, access to the social task management system is a web-based product. So you basically have a a dashboard where you can go in and check on your, your task list. You can go and look at all of the different projects that you're following, and you can see an activity feed, uh, both that's sent to you, say, in your email if you opt in for that, or it's just available in the browser-based tool that allows you to follow up, you know, sort of minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, uh, each of the tasks that you're working on. And, of course, these are also available on our, our Android and iOS mobile products. So you could take a map, you could create it on your, your Windows desktop, you could store it up in our cloud-based um, public cloud product, and you could access that map uh, from your, your Android device, for instance, go in and make some edits, go in and show it to your, your, your client on a, uh, on a tablet, uh, you know, have them put some inputs into it. So it's a very fluid way uh, of moving from mobile devices to web-based web access and back down to our, our desktop clients as well. And, and that's so exciting because the mobility um, area is just, it's really starting to take off now. I think you guys got ahead of it, timed it perfectly, and it should be a great opportunity to find, um, you know, opportunities, you know, across business right now for, for that aspect of your product. But you also men mentioned SharePoint, and I definitely wanted to spend some time um, on this particular topic because MindJet is such a valuable tool for anyone who's utilizing SharePoint. And can you talk a bit about that and why it's such a powerful addition to SharePoint implementations? Absolutely. So we've, we've always had pretty close integration with SharePoint from our desktop products. As we moved into our, our web-based hosted services, as we started talking with many of our customers who already had our product, you know, they said, I love the, the public cloud product. I use it myself from home occasionally. 
but my, my, my corporate policy is, you know, for these projects that I want to work on with MindJet's technology is I can't send them outside the firewall. Um, and so, you know, we'd, we'd love to, to work with you. We'd love to have a hosted service, but we can't, uh, we can't use anything that's outside of our own firewall. So we looked at various different ways of meeting the needs of those customers, and really the theme we kept seeing over and over again was that they all had SharePoint. You know, at, at one point or another, they had adopted SharePoint, at the very least, as, as, a, as a document storage and management system, and frequently many of them were investing more and more heavily, uh, especially as the 2010 release came out, and now a lot of the, the wonderful stuff that's coming out in the 2013 release, they said, really, you know, SharePoint is going to be a key part of our intranet uh, in the years to come. And so we said, okay, what we will do is we'll create a product that runs essentially as a SharePoint add-on. And so what this, what this really allows you to do is do this sort of browser-based mapping and even more importantly in many ways, use maps as embedded web parts inside the SharePoint environment. So th this gives people who are using SharePoint three huge, huge advantages from a, from a MindJet standpoint. So as I said just a second ago, one of the things you can do is put up in essentially a, a viewer-based tool uh, a map inside a SharePoint site. And what this means is, you know, uh, you could use the map as a navigational aid, you know, like showing information across, you know, here is all the different departments that have SharePoint sites, and here's some of the key uh, information that's stored up there. Or you could have a map that was associated with an individual project. So you come up and say, here's a SharePoint site for a project, and here's a navigational map that shows all of the key documents associated with this project. Or you could have a map set up on your HR site that would say a, a new hire onboarding map. It would say, you know, here's the, the ten steps you have to go through, here's the five websites you have to log into, you know, all nicely visually organized and presented uh, clearly in, in a, in a you know, read-only way for people who are just trying to navigate and find information on SharePoint because we heard over and over again from customers who are using this in a desktop sense uh, that a, a map is a great way to just find and work with information on a SharePoint site. The other two big pluses are, uh, one, as we made a decision about moving from mapping and into the SharePoint environment, we realized, you know, we don't want to replicate the SharePoint file storage and, and management system, so we, we take full advantage of all of the administrative controls and check in, check out, all of that that you can do in SharePoint. But, but we also said, you know, we like this idea of using the map to help drive tasks. But SharePoint already has a task management system. So we put in, in our, this web-based product, running on top of SharePoint, a whole way of, of both bringing in, viewing, and managing SharePoint task information inside a map, but also taking that information as you put together a plan and sending that, using it to create tasks within SharePoint as well. So a great way of, of working with and helping drive adoption of SharePoint as a task management system. And then finally, it's just a, a great way to, to, for people that have information stored in maps to share that information with anybody else in the organization. Because now you can go in and view a map you know, without checking out a license anywhere within SharePoint. So I, as a, as a MindJet desktop user, could post a map up on a SharePoint site, point people at, at it, when they clicked on it, they could open up and view it. And if they have a license, they could go in and actually edit it as well. So you get that, that mapped-based collaboration across groups who have access to the SharePoint site, just as we do in our, in our public cloud product. OK, that's great. Um, I'm going to move this along a little bit now. Um, and I'm going to combine a couple of questions for you here. So you've really done an excellent job of sort of, you know, um, uh, painting the picture for us of all the different ways customers can benefit from MindJet. Um, but let's talk about the opportunity in the marketplace. Um, can you tell us, you know, kind of where the sweet spot is or if there's a particular sweet spot in any vertical for MindJet right now? And how can resellers um, recognize good MindJet opportunities? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question, Don. And I'll try and, I'll try and step it up a little bit here and be more concise. So when, when customers are talking about brainstorming, collaboration, task management, project management, you know, interested in strategic planning or process improvements, that should you know, sort of prick up your ears uh, as a possible MindJet opportunity. 
And then, you know, we, we sort of have standard questions that we talk about. It's like, you know, do you need a better way to brainstorm ideas, agree on priority, priorities, and share information across your distributed team? You know, do you need a better way to gather project requirements and gain alignment on goals and schedules with your team members? You know, those sort of questions, you know, seeing are they, are they having sort of fundamental issues with, with collaboration, idea creation, task management, you know, that'll help you identify very quickly uh, whether these are a MindJet opportunity or not. And then specifically around SharePoint, you know, I think, one, just make sure that they have SharePoint. <laughs> Pretty much everybody is always, you know, struggling with SharePoint adoption. So we, we really like to emphasize the fact that, you know, this helps, you know, increase people's use of SharePoint by making the information more available. Uh, and then frequently these, people, these SharePoint customers will also have pockets of MindJet expertise already within the organization. So a sweet spot from my standpoint, especially for the SharePoint product, is a customer that already uses MindJet, say, on their Windows desktop product, they're struggling a bit with SharePoint adoption in terms of just the basic finding and, and organizing information, and, uh, you know, they see the, the value of, of using information mapping to help them, you know, drive projects and create ideas, you know, that's a terrific opportunity uh, for the whole MindJet offering and the, the MindJet uh, SharePoint add-on, which we call MindJet on-premise uh, as well. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you, that was very well done. Um, sort of piggybacking onto that now, I, I want to talk to you about, you know, the real opportunity for resellers. Um, you've explained the value proposition of MindJet and how to uncover opportunities, but can a reseller really make money selling MindJet? What's, what's the total opportunity look like for a reseller? I'd say there, there is always an opportunity. MindJet is a great tool for training customers, just intrinsically as a tool itself, and it's a great way to help, you know, sort of train the trainers inside an organization as they start rolling out their MindJet deployment. Because, you know, like any other piece of software, if people aren't comfortable using it, uh, they won't be adopting it. So I think there's a huge opportunity uh, for resellers to go in and, and set up a, a training opportunity that can, you know, expand as the opportunity expands inside of the company. And then the other one is that as resellers uh, and as we work with resellers, there's a lot of ways that you can go through and, and set up sort of pre-customized templates, bring in information that help sort of standardize workflows within companies, uh, you can set up all of that as part of a consulting contract with a company that's interested in, in purchasing the MindJet software, uh, software as well. So I think there's, there's nice training opportunities and there's nice consulting opportunities packaged in uh, just with the software sale itself. Okay. So it, this, is, this is looking like a great opportunity always round for our resellers. Lots of ways customers can take advantage of the product. Um, lots of potential for uh, pull, pull through on services and um, just a great product that's well established in the marketplace. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, I think what we want to do now is uh, take a check and see what sort of questions we have from the audience. And uh, to start off, um, I, I have one here that says I've had Minimal exposure to MindJet. How do I learn more? Get a tour of MindJet, its function, pricing model, etc. So for the for the pricing model, I would send them to you, Don. But for for everything else, I would go up to www.mindjet.com. I would download a trial of the software. It's it's really there, there's a series of of, of in product videos and tutorials, uh, quick start guides inside the product itself. Uh, and then there's, there's additional learning and tutorial, video-based tutorials up on the site uh, underneath the, the customer support section. So download a trial on mindjet.com and try it out. If nothing else, I would, I would download the free application on your, on your Android or iOS device and try out both the, the mapping and the task management system and just see if you can, you can get started with that. Oh, that would be awesome. That's a great way to get familiar with the product. Um, next question um, has to do with collateral and so forth. Is there an email slip that can be sent out that we can use when speaking to our customers? Uh, you want to take that one? 
Yeah, I mean, we, we do have, through our, uh, through our channel partners, our channel marketing group, we can provide you with, we have standardized presentations, we have standardized email templates, uh, and we have, a, you know, a, a, a sort of a background presentation as well that sort of takes you through kind of the, you know, top questions and, and uh, kind of an FAQ for channel partners as well. And those should all be available uh, through either our channel, channel team or through Lifeboat itself. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, I have a question about not for resale licenses. Um, are NFRs available to resellers? I believe they are. I am, I am not an expert on that. I, I, I send out NFR copies myself, so I know it technically can be done. I'm not exactly sure how a reseller uh, requests one, but I, I am sure you can coordinate that with our team, Don. Okay, so what I'm going to what I'm going to add on to that, Kelly, is that um, I also am um, pretty sure that NFRs can be made available. And what I recommend is to contact your Lifeboat sales rep and let them know that you would like an NFR copy of MindJet. If you don't know who your Lifeboat um, rep is, you can email sales at lifeboatdistribution.com, and we'll make sure you get what you need. Okay. This next question, Kelly, is definitely one for you. Um, it says, what level of interaction is there for outside non-subscriber in interaction? That's an excellent question, and I sort of, I, I didn't skip over it, but I touched it very briefly. So one of, one of the nice features of the web account uh, which is basically our, what we call our MindJet web app, uh, is that you can share maps and tasks or projects in our task management with what we call our guests. So basically you, you have the ability to, to invite people who have not purchased a copy of the software um, into a certain number of maps and basically an unlimited number of projects and tasks. So right now for a MindJet business account, that's, that's four maps. Uh, and you can invite those people in with both editing and viewing capabilities. For anything beyond that, you can invite people in as well, but they have view-only capabilities. So the idea is to, to make it very easy for people to interact uh, with an official MindJet customer who has a, has a paying license uh, for a full seat of MindJet for Business with people who are coming in just for a short period of time. You know, we always encourage people, if you're, if you're working with a bunch of team members over and over again inside of a company, you know, sell them a, a seat of MindJet. But if, you know, for a month or six weeks they're working on a project and you need input from a customer or from an outside vendor or even, you know, other, another group inside of the company that's only going to do it, you know, once or twice, invite them in, in as a guest and share the information in a map with them. It, we tried to make that as easy and as viral as possible. Okay, great answer. Great answer. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so, folks, um, please continue to uh, ask any questions that you may have. Um, we're going to move on to, uh, I'm sure, the uh, your highlight for the uh, presentation today, which is we're going to give away a $100 Amex gift card. And let me just um, reach into my basket here and pull a winner. All right, I think I have it. It looks like today's winner is Glenn Curry from GHA Technologies. Thank you, Glenn, so much for uh, for attending, and congratulations. We will get you that Amex gift card in short order. Um, anyone else with questions, please feel free to get them in. Um, in the meantime, while you may be answering your questions, I'm going to move on to our traditional call to action. Um, Kelly already talked about some of this, but what we recommend from Lifeboat is that you do visit the MindJet website. And I have a link on the slide here that actually will connect you to the MindJet Partner Zone. Uh, MindJet has been revamping their Partner Zone, and they have just tons of information up there for you. So you'll find product information, cheat sheets. Um, you'll find uh, various kinds of learning aids, um, all the case studies and so forth that you could use um, to put in front of your customers and help you sell MindJet more effectively. 
Um, we also always recommend that you contact your lifeboat sales rep. Um, reach out to them anytime. If you want more of a deep dive demo on MindJet, we'll help set that up for you. We're here to help you with any opportunity, uh, whether you need pricing assistance or other types of pre-sales assistance. Our team is knowledgeable and uh, at the ready to help you sell more MindJet. Um, one last check for questions. I don't see anything here at the moment. So, Callie, before we go, what are the, you know, a few key things that you would like our loyal resellers to remember about MindJet? Just that, you know, I think MindJet is a, is a great um, opportunity for an add-on sale. You know, when you're looking at, you know, a customer that's got SharePoint, Microsoft Office, you know, other places where they're, you know, anytime they're interested in individual productivity, increased team productivity, you know, uh, it, it's nice to, to add MindJet to the deal because we, we, we enhance and extend uh, a lot of the software that you're already selling. Okay, that's wonderful. All right, so everybody, I hope you found today's discussion with MindJet valuable. Um, with MindJet, you get the most innovative software to help your customers gain productivity and share knowledge. And you get great people to work with at MindJet. I mean, honestly, they're dedicated to building a great channel of partners. They would love to hear from you. Um, Kelly, thanks so much, as always, for uh, participating with us today. Um, I very much enjoyed the conversation. All right. So thank you once again, everyone, for attending. Um, so for now, uh, for Lifeboat Distribution and all the great folks at MindJet, um, thanks so much. Have a great day, and we hope to hear from you soon.